Hi, Mama. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, today we're going to talk about a long, long time ago. <laughs> a story from way back yonder. 1977. What happened that year? You were born. Oh. Yes. My child. <laughs> Yes, 45 and change years ago, right? So you were having a C-section for me. I was yes. your third. My third okay. cesarean section. Okay. And why did you need to have a cesarean section? Because, um, well, your brother was born five years earlier. And after about 24 hours of hard labor, <laughs> They decided, okay, we're going to do a cesarean. And then five years later, your sister came along, and it was cesarean number two, and we knew we wanted one more, and it just seemed like if we were going to do it, we needed to go ahead and jump in the deep end of the pool. So 11 months after your sister was born, you were born. And 11, wait, did you say 11 months? After my sister was born, I was born. Yes. Eleven months. You're, yeah. you're making me check my uh, eleven months and sixteen. My math. <laughs> eleven months and sixteen days. Oh, you know that for a fact. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we just decided we'd do what one more. I was a mistake. No, you were very planned. You were disgust uh -huh. because we knew we wanted one more, and we knew what the cesareans are like and the, and the healing time. And we thought, hmm, we're going to do it. We'll do it now. And you were supposed to come then. So, because you're very special. And um, when I went in to see my OBGYN for my checkup after your sister was born, he said, have you lost your mind? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, no, no, I'm pregnant, aren't I? <laughs> okay, so you went through your pregnancy with me, everything was fine, but they knew they were going to do a C-section. Yeah. And so you went in, everything was okay, and go ahead with the story from there. Okay, well, you you were born. I mean, I'm a, I'm awake. You're awake during a cesarean section. And I Did you have did you feel like you were on a lot of drugs? Like were you on anything really strong? I mean, I guess you were... You don't have any... Your head's fine. Okay. You're, you're with it, but you don't have any feeling. Okay. Um, I heard you cry. I saw you. They put you beside my face, and I told you I loved you, and then they whisked you away, and then I started having pain, probably because they took you away. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, they... And then I heard my doctor say something, something stat, I don't remember what. And the next thing I knew, I was not conscious anymore, but I was like, and I had never heard of anything like this happening before. I had never heard this story by right. anyone before. Right. But it was like, I was speed. I was speed. And I was going down a tunnel at an incredible rate of speed, dark, black tunnel toward a light. There was a light at the end. And once I got to the light, I knew I wasn't alone. I don't, I didn't really see anything. It was just all in my mind, in my mm. brain. And all of a sudden, this is bizarre, I knew the answer to every question that anybody, everybody, had ever asked. Was it just a feeling that went through you? Like, I just, I know everything. I know everything right now. Or was it just kind of this, just moment of knowing? It was just a monumental, magnificent, incredible moment of knowing everything. Hmm. Just all knowing. How did that feel? Exhilarating. It, it was mind-blowing. And it was just my reaction to it, and I even said this, I spoke this, that's it? That's, that's all it is? <laughs> and 
I realized the answer, I mean, the answers were not in my ears. They were in my heart. Okay. The answer was, yep, that's pretty much it. The only thing of all the things that we humans on this earth bother ourselves with and stress about and have angst about, it doesn't matter. They don't matter. The Mm. only thing that matters is that we love one another. Hmm. Period. Simple. We love one another. And I mean, I was, I was amazed. I was like, that's it. That's That's it. It It makes sense. It makes sense. Hmm. And, and then what happened? Well, I, I needed to go back. Mm-hmm. For one thing, I wanted to share the story. Did you feel like you were there for a while? Like, were you just resonating in that feeling of love? Or did you feel like any other presence with you? Oh, God was there. Yeah. It was God. Mm. Totally, totally convinced of that. Mm. No one will ever change my mind. <laughs> I was in the presence. I mean, I was in his presence. Did I see him? No. Him, her, whatever. Did I feel him? Yes. Mm. Did I feel safe? Yes. Mm. Did I have a choice to stay or go? Yes. Mm. And I said, I need to go back. Mm. Was it a question that you feel like you were into, like, given? Or was it just, you just, you were in that moment and then you said, it's time for me to go back? Or did it, was it like, do you want to stay? You have the choice, like... It, it all happened so quickly. Yeah. I, I'm not even sure, and it's been a long time, too. But it was, it was just, it was never, uh, hmm, what do I want to do? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, I just, I remember being overwhelmed and overjoyed, and but knowing I needed to go back, knowing yeah. I wanted to go back to, to you and Jenny and Christopher and your dad, mm-hmm. and knowing that I kind of had a message to take with me. Oh. Okay. So, which got shot down pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about that. But let's finish the story. So you you had that feeling, love is all that matters. It's been your mantra forever now. Yes. And you brought that back. And then did you feel yourself come back? Or did you just, like, what happened after that? Oh, well, I felt myself get conscious again. Okay. And there was no longer any pain. I didn't feel any pain. But I did come to kind of sort of and I realized I was still in the operating room and I called called my OBGYN by his first name I can't believe I did that I said oh well first of all I tried I tried apparently my hands went up like this my arms (laughs) went up in the air and they were immediately brought down Mm. I felt that and strapped and one of the nurses patted my arm and she said, honey, we, we need to strap you because you were trying to help with your surgery. <laughs> so, and that's when I said, thank you, Frank, you saved my life. Mm. And I heard him say, what did she say? <laughs> and I said it again. I said, thank you, Frank, you saved my life. Mm. Because I had come back and I figured he did whatever he needed to do to bring me <laughs> you know to bring me back so did they ever say that anything went wrong like that something they never did they never did and I literally not all that long ago probably in the last few years wrote him a letter because he's still a physician and asked him but I never received an answer (laughs) so but it wouldn't matter what he said I know what happened yep yep so what else happened after that? Like, how soon did you see Dad and talk to him about it? Or? Oh, I couldn't wait to see your dad. Mm-hmm. I could not wait. And the minute in recovery, they let he got to watch you. He got to peek. Back in those days, Dad couldn't come in. Right. So, but they allowed him to look through a door, and he did. So he saw you born, and he saw you when they whisked you away. Mm-hmm. But um, the minute he came in recovery... I just (laughs) spilled it. I just couldn't. I I was so excited. Yeah. And I told him, this happened. Listen to this. This happened. I don't remember his reaction. So Hmm. I I don't know. It was just overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. 
So what about the days leading up after that? Like, I know a lot was going on, but how much did you kind of think about that moment in the, over the next days, weeks, months? Well, I had never heard of near-death experiences, so I had nothing to read about or compare it to. Mm-hmm. And I pretty much only talked with your father about it. Christopher, maybe. I may have told him because it was quite a wild ride. But the very, very first person I talked to was a neighbor. And I just got brave. And I told her, I said, I'm going to share something with you. And she said, oh, okay. And I told her what happened. And she just looked at me like I had two heads. And she said... I've never heard of such a thing. She said, that's, you just had a dream. Mm. You just had a dream. That didn't happen. That wasn't real. Mm. So then I just kind of, mm. and just kept it to myself. What, for years? or Probably years. <laughs> yeah. Probably years. Yeah. So when did it kind of resurface or, and then you remember that message. So did that message stay with you? Then you shared that message or? Through the years, or oh, like when that did it... message has stayed with me here mm-hmm. and here every day. I think about it mm-hmm. every day. <laughs> it was awesome. monumental, and it was a gift. Mm-hmm. So, so when did you kind of start finding things about NDEs, near death experience, and then getting more into the spiritual aspect of of things? Um, because how did you grow up? You grew up Christian, right? Absolutely, right. And so, did you think that went along with the the message that you were taught, or did you think that you were like, did you feel like you had to keep it quiet, or, or was it I just... kept it quiet just because of my neighbor. Oh. I I I felt like she thinks I'm lying. She mm-hmm. thinks I made this up. So you were afraid that everybody was going to think. That I was way? afraid that everybody. I mean, I didn't care if they thought I was crazy because I felt like I had this blessed experience to share and I I think maybe I felt even a little bit guilty that I didn't but it was so real and I didn't want anybody to tarnish that oh yeah so yeah but then you know it it did start coming out in the news and and you'd see a little glimmer here or a little something there and I go so similar (laughs) it's so similar to, to what happened and there are probably bazillions of people who've had that experience yeah and then you kind of maybe bought some books and started reading absolutely yeah and then you really it kind of solidified the experience that it's real it's totally well it's always been real (laughs) all right to me right right you're a miracle (laughs) you're one of two miracles that happened that day well well thank you Mm -hmm. um i know (laughs) i know (laughs) No, but it's cool that we share that, that day and that experience together in a way, you know? It's, it's awesome. So, I mean, how how has it, like, kind of influenced your spiritual journey? Like, where you've come, like, from then until even now? Like, do you think it came to you for a reason? I mean, do you think that, or, I mean, it was just kind of something you needed in the moment or maybe something that was good for you just in general, or, or, or is it, it was a message that you needed to share? Like, I mean, how do you kind of, what did you do with it? Or, well, I've always thought it was a message okay. that needed to be shared, right. but I did have kind of an aha moment when we lost your brother. Oh, like, okay, go ahead and talk about well, that. Well, I think I even, at his memorial service in the church, I think I even stood up and said, and now I'm going to cry. It's okay. <laughs> now I understand why God gave me that experience. Yeah. It was to tell me, you really have Christopher for a while. Mm. But when I bring him home, you know where he's going. Yeah. And you will see him again. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so Chris died in 1993. He was 22 years old, died in a car accident. Uh, I was 16. My sister was 15, 17. Um, yeah, that was a, what, how long has that been now? We're gonna oh. go, it's 30 years. Yeah. 29, 28, 29. Uh, my math is not good. <laughs> well, 93, yeah. 30 years this year. 
Uh, yeah, 29. Yeah, because it was in September. Um, so, did, I mean, was that a little bit of a comfort for you? As comforting I mean, as you can be. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, there's nothing worse than losing a child. It's comforting to me now. It's it's comforting to me every time I start to trip over my bottom lip. Mm-hmm. I say, hey, wait, mm-hmm. you have a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, so. absolutely. absolutely. I mean, yeah, so, and then after Chris, uh, you started to, I know, get even more into diving into well after you know the initial just shock and trauma um which you know lasted a while but I know you really started to dive deep into spirituality absolutely and and is there anybody that you really liked studying or reading about or anything that kind of rang true to you when you were going through like kind of your spiritual journey I mean I know you had I know you got Reiki certified, you went through hypnosis certification, you, you know, you were discovering all, just all different types of spirituality and, and self-discovery, and, but any kind of spiritual practice or anything that you... Prayer. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Prayer. I'm a yeah. big time prayer. Um, yeah. I talk to God all yeah. the time. She talks out loud <laughs> while she's like doing things around the house. She's just singing and talking out loud and... And I've always loved that about you. You're just talk, you know, just talking out loud. And I think that's so powerful, you know, that like just bringing voice to, you know, to whatever's going on inside of you. And what is prayer to you? Oh, it's communicating. It's communicating with God, mm. with angels, with mm-hmm. with all the spirits that surround us. I talk to Christopher every day. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, Do you feel his presence? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see him. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But you and feel you feel him. You are a big part of my spiritual life because you are very very spiritual. So, I really Mhm. Yeah, we have that connection. We do. <laughs> For sure. Um and we can finish each other's songs in sentences. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no doubt, no yeah. doubt. Um, well, that's awesome. I love that you just talk to God. So, like, do you ever feel like... It, so you see it more as communication, yeah? Not like like um, just a friend kind of thing, like just talking back and forth. And, and, oh, no. Because everybody it's... has so many definitions of prayer, you know, and what is prayer? and Is God really there? Or who am I talking to? Or... Um, like, how do you see it for, for kind of, I'm not sure how to put it into words. It's Mm -hmm. just comforting. It's, it's like being an infant and having your parent there, you know, it's, Mm. it's just knowing that no matter what happens to us, we're safe. Mm. Maybe not on this earth, but someday Mm -hmm. we all go home and we'll be safe and, Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's just here. He's he's here right now. He's you know he's with us and yeah. and that's you see us as like um you know we talk about like imagination and imagery and stuff on this channel. Do you see do you see it as a presence? Do you see God as like a like something you kind of make an image out of, or is it more you know just light or what do you? I would you... say light. It's light. Mm. It's what I saw when I was going down that tunnel, it's a brilliant, ever-present, beautiful, safe, loving, spiritual light. Mm. It's, I don't think God can be whittled down into a form. Mm -hmm. He's beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Do you, so you talk to God and you talk to Chris. It's like a separate thing. So you'll kind of like. Oh, I talk to everybody I love who's gone. <laughs> I talk to Granny. I talk to. That's awesome. I talk to everybody. Now I'm talking to Renee. <laughs> Since you told me you lost your friend Renee from college. Oh, really? Yes. I, oh, I didn't yeah. remember that that she had yeah. gone on. and So, yeah, I just talked to them all. It's, there's like, they're everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, do you and you feel that like it just comes to you? Just you just feel, yeah. 
And I think mm. they communicate with us. Mm-hmm. I, you, you, if you listen, mm-hmm. sometimes you can hear and you go, what? What? Well, we've, we've had some guided imagery sessions. It's been a few years, but remember we did some guided imagery? I do. And, and we really had some pretty special um, moments with that. That was really fun. Yes. Um, I mean, I really felt Chris's spirit um, in a couple of those sessions. And I know you had like a lineup of like your like granny and you just had like a lineup of people (laughs) but what was interesting about those times was it always seemed like they were there but they were kind of like what I remember and like I don't know if you remember but it was like they were just like yeah everything's fine like because I don't think time is an issue like time is not anything there so they're just like you know what's the problem we're you know we'll, we'll be around kind of thing yeah, yeah and it was just like yeah what's the do problem? your thing don't rush yeah yeah, yeah. like mm-hmm. i gotta go now i got things to do yeah <laughs> yeah we're not just floating on a cloud up here yeah this yeah. is a population <laughs> exactly so yeah. yeah that's the sense i got i don't know about you but very much but so. it seems like they're always accessible when 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 we really need them or when we just want to talk to them like you do on a daily basis yeah right they're just they're right there right right it's awesome well i think they stay busy i think i think they stay busy and sometimes maybe they won't be right there unless you like start to have a little hissy fit or something and <laughs> and, and they may okay okay now <laughs> I, hear you. I know that you and you and dad also loved to go to like um airbnbs that were maybe haunted or oh, like yes. because mo- mom has a, a propensity for really being able to feel that energy right yep yeah so yep. do you have like any stories of being able to feel any of that like in the yeah um i'm trying to think of to help you out with oh uh, you have a few you have a few but one one when we went to um the dr goop thing when we went to oh, Washington. Oh, yeah, in D.C. In yeah, D.C. In DC. Yeah, that was and a big old house, right? That was a big old house. Yeah. And, I mean, like, attic, every, you know, lots of rooms. And and Dad and I stayed in the basement. I think you guys were in different rooms or something. Well, that Eddie went with us, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I told her, Dad, something's down here. Someone's down here with us. Mm-hmm. And he said, okay. And I said, nothing to be scared of, I mean, you know. <laughs> just, but something's down here with, someone's down here with us. Anyway, the next morning he asked at breakfast, it was a B&B, is, are there any spirits in the house? Mm-hmm. Only in the basement <laughs> was the answer. <laughs> Only in the basement. <laughs> so, it was yeah. friendly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ghosts are just spirits, and why we can sense them, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I pray and I hope they're not stuck on the earth plane. Yeah. I don't. Do I believe in scary boo ghosts? No, I don't believe in that. Yeah, I know we've talked about it before. Like, are that is it imprinted old energy, or you know, like that's kind of what I tend towards. But I don't know. Like nobody knows. It could be. It um, could be. But yeah, yeah, I don't think anybody's stuck. I don't believe in that. Um, but, you know, again, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, but I, I just, I believe everything is energy. I believe everything is energy. Absolutely. So, when, so even when you tap into, like we talk a lot about on this channel too, is like, is getting out of this beta brain, like boom, 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 and like really relaxing into the alpha or even the theta state where you can really dive into your imagination. And then all this stuff from from within can emerge where and God is within us right the kingdom is within us so we can feel that energy from our loved ones from the other side we can feel our own energy and then we can even for people that are alive we can send energy like through prayer we can send positive energy to people and I just I don't know exactly how it works but I just know that 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 energy is is powerful and I think some people are able like you you're able to tap in to that energy you know like you just you just you're you're a deeply feeling person <laughs> would you say yeah <laughs> a sensitive person I mean, we, both, we both are <laughs> sensitive and I think yeah. our sensitivity um we were really able to pick up on energy uh, energy that's even like sitting around from 20 years ago (laughs) in this room or energy you know just between 
two people right here, we can feel that energy. Yes. Um, and so it's, it's and, and this energy with this puppy under here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so that's like the Reiki, you know, that's, that's all energy. Heat. Yeah. Heat coming yeah. from here, yeah. I think. Yeah. Make sure I'm still recording. Yeah, I am. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. The heat. I mean, it's amazing. You can, if you focus on something long enough, you can actually just bring heat right to that, right to that finger. I mean, I can, if I really focus on it for a second, I can make it hot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's that power of attention, I think, right? Yes. It's, and if we decide, you know, like, I want to pay attention to um, Chris today. You know, I just want to, like, while I'm doing the dishes, I just want to focus on his energy and the love and the, the me- not just the memory, but, I mean, he's still here, you know? Yes. And, I mean, and... Um, the positivity. The love. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Love. Yeah. The love is never lost. No. Because love is all that matters. That's right. <laughs> and you learned that <laughs> the day yes. I was born. Yeah. No, but you always knew that. You always knew that, right? Yeah. I mean, the whole message... Actually, the whole message, everything that we worry and concern ourselves with and pull our hair about and all the angst and all the depression and worry, 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 it's, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter the terrible things you see on the news, you know, that are really going on in the world. Pray about it, yes. Mm-hmm. Pray for God to take care of it, but... What matters is that you send it love, that mm. you send love. Just yeah. send love. Yeah, it always comes back to the golden rule, right? Do unto others. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we could all just do that, you know, this world would be a pretty amazing And it already is. It is an amazing place. And people are doing that. And you're just not always seeing it. That's why I don't watch the news. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, but it's kind of heartbreaking it to is watch hard. the it news is hard. and terrifying. And but the, but the, man's I, inhumanity to I know, I know. And so... It's not like, it's like you got this message that love is all that matters and all of these things don't matter. But, but in a way, though, we are here to experience those trials and tribulations, right? right. I mean, we're they, here to, I mean, what do you think? Are we here to grow? Are we here to learn lessons? I mean, what's your general Possibly. Idea? This is like school. Detention, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in detention for a long time. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite stories about you that I want to share out loud is... No, no, no. Yes, when you were in third grade. Oh, come on. And some kids were fighting on the playground. Oh, God, goodness gracious. <laughs> and you went over and you said... I don't know if people were trying to break them up or what, but you said, come on, kids or guys or whatever. What would Jesus what, do? WWJD. Did I have my bracelet on? You probably <laughs> did. <laughs> yeah. Oh they stopped gosh. fighting, though, didn't they? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I think one went to the hospital. I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's pretty pretty funny. Um, yeah, well, I mean, and, and, and Jesus, I love I love the story of Jesus and Christ consciousness and the, the, you know, like, love is really, you know, love is the answer to all things. And, um it's, it's easy to say and hard to do sometimes, you know, because yeah. we're all going through so much. We lose people we love, you know, we're going through physical pain or whatever, and it's it can be hard to just really just get back to that center. And, and then you get so, like, especially our world right now, or just everything, all the oh, attention so is just, much. the tension is just so external. Like, everything is just on the external, all of our attention. And so that's why I... I just really believe in the power of meditation or even just a minute or even just like, like you do with the, just singing and, and going like, and feeling that light within you, even just for a few minutes, um, and just getting back to your center, you know, yeah. which, and when you really do that, get back to your center, th- there's only love there. Cause that's what we are, right? God is love and we are all, you know, God's children we're all you know as I like to say we are we are divine and we are divinely created yeah yeah you know like I I just love it that you have 
this story that no you had never even heard of right with the near-death experience before and um you know people it just it seems like it just it's the same very general usually the same kind of thing where you're floating through things or whatever and there's a tunnel and but then there's a lot of it can be a lot of different stories around that, oh, just based on different... And I can't, you know? I don't get tired of them. I, sometimes <laughs> I just go to YouTube and look up NDE now to read. It's amazing. Read, 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 because, oh, that happened, or, yeah. oh my gosh, somebody else felt that. You know, it's, Yeah. I can't read it enough. It's, it's... And it changes them. I mean, they come back and their life is, like, pretty... I mean, maybe not their day-to-day life, but they are transformed. I mean, once you really have that feeling. And what I want, what I like to tell people is you actually can have that feeling without having to be near death. I mean, the, some of the stuff I've experienced in guided imagery is just so profound with the light and with just feeling this powerful energy within yourself. It's all here. And, yes, and, 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 and it's just, it's that attention has been just so taken away from us that it, you know, sometimes you have to have a near-death experience to feel it. <laughs> Unfortunately. Not, not that you did, because you've always been very spiritual. But, you know, it's like, you know, you don't have to go through that. Like, you, God is, like, r- right here, and, and the, the power, and you are that creator and the created. And um, just to, to take that little bit of time every day, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and feel your light and the light that is within you. It's so powerful, you know. It's, it's like being bathed in positivity. Yeah. And and one thing that you taught me, you guys taught me, is the power of music and just the oh, power yes. that, that that can really resonate um, and the sa- and just sound therapy and, and just, you know, so if you need to feel it through music, if that helps you, you know, find Absolutely. it. Absolutely. That- music, even dance, that's expression. Yes, yes. You know, it's just expressing joy. Absolutely. Yeah, it's filled with however joy. you however you can feel that joy and express that joy. Um, that's it's we need to just I mean, it's just to get keep getting in touch with that, you know, in this world that is just so broken in some places, you know, and, and, and but it, it doesn't have to be that way. We can get back to our back to our roots of love, you know. Yes. Um, Sing, dance, write. <laughs> yes. Go to a hospital and rock babies. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's there's so many wonderful things you can do. Just Watch to... cat videos. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun too. <laughs> hey man, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. That's right. Have a, That's little, right. have a laugh, you know. Cats have spirits too. <laughs> <laughs> so do dogs. So do puppy dogs. <laughs> oh. Well, thanks, mom, for sharing your story. Thanks for asking. Yes, yes. Find the joy. Find the joy and, and, and the mantra, the number one mantra. And what is it? Love is all that matters. Love is all that matters. Love is all that matters. Thanks, Mama. I love you. I love you, too. Of all my written rhymes to date, I find it quite absurd. I never penned our Joey's birth when miracles occurred. The first one was that she was here. Our family was complete. To hold her to my beating heart had made my life complete. The second was my tunnel journey, dark and wrapped in speed, halting at a brilliant light, a sacred light indeed. Amazed at when arriving, the floodlights opened wide and blinded by the brilliance, knowing God was by my side. A rain of joyful knowledge filled each crevice of my heart. Every question answered, every second from my start. A vessel of all-knowing and forgiving and delight. Celebration of the living gifted my unseeing sight. Overwhelmed in wonder and blessed beyond belief, every question answered, even sorrow, even grief. All the wonderings and the musings, all the prayers sent up above, the only thing that matters, pure and simple, is to love. <laughs> Very good. Very good. You wrote mm-hmm. that yesterday. You yes. That yesterday. <laughs>